Hello and welcome back to this video. This is the last one in the series and I hope you've gotten tremendous value out of working through some of these ideas with me and thinking about how you can apply them in your own organization. This is a very important subject and is one of the core key ideas within Customer Engagement Magazine and what we do in terms of how do we work with somebody to transform their organization. So what I want you to do at this stage is hopefully you've taken a lot of notes as you've gone through and done an assessment of your current operations. You've taken a look at your executive class of executive class or your C-suite and that's really the, uh, the starting point because everything starts at the top and flows through an organization. You've taken a look at your work processes, you've taken a look at your employees, you have talked to a number of them, you've captured the key ideas and frustrations that are on their mind, what their aspirations and their goals are for moving forward. You've taken a look at what are some of the approaches you can use to create a culture that is truly employee centered that can help you become customer driven. And you've also taken a look at your observations for how you interact with your existing customers. Wow, that's a lot of work. And I wanna really congratulate you for getting this far into the process. Now, what do we do now? Well, what we need to do now is we need to plot a road to go forward and figure out how we can implement some ideas and strategies that can ultimately lead to some tangible benefits. So remember what I said when we first started this video, you have to have the support of the executive team. You have to be willing to make some challenging decisions in order to re give re, re new life, be reborn as an organization and to move forward. So that being said, first step after understanding where you are is to figure out where you want to go. What's your desired state? So throughout this video series, I have been helping you understand how to assess where you are, but I've also been giving you a lot of clues and ideas and strategies and things to think about in terms of where you want to go. So what I want you to do now is to take everything that I've talked about and almost draw a line down the page where you have the observations on what you're doing today and figure out where you want to go into the future across all of these key points. Now, once you know where you want to go, the next key aspect is going to be to figure out what the gap is between where you are and where you want to go. What is the biggest problem that you face relative to what I've talked about? For some of you, that challenge might be at the executive level. You might be the owner of a business that has a group of executives that are not truly on the same page as you. That might be your biggest problem. In other organizations, you might have a pretty strong executive team that is in fact on board with being employee centered and customer driven, but is having some challenges with the work processes and operationalizing some of these hiccups in the process and smoothing it out. Some of you might have employees that are really not as engaged as they need to be, mostly because they've had the wrong upbringing. That's right, upbringing. You attract employees into an organization and you indoctrinate them and train them and you shape them to be able to best represent your values and your beliefs as an organization. Perhaps that might be a challenge. But I'm willing to bet <clears throat> the problem isn't with your employees as the root. Because you see, employees will always mold themselves to their leadership. Unfortunately, you can almost think of employees as water and the glass as the management and the leadership team the employees will mold themselves into the shape of the glass. So one of the things that I want you to consider is how you can move your executive team to be even more employee centered and customer driven than they are today. And in order for you to do that, <clears throat> you're going to need to start with a champion. And from that champion, you're going to need to indoctrinate and challenge and motivate and inspire your executive suite to shift. Now, some of these folks are going to shift because they understand that this is important and that they are happy that the senior leaders are really on board with this. Some of them are not. And for those, it might be time to say bye bye. Now, as you start to do this, you're going to need to work through the work processes of the organization and get rid of all of the challenges and the hiccups that are limiting your organization from operating like a collaborative and cohesive team. 
you're going to need to take a serious look at your employees. And as you start to do these changes throughout the organization, some employees are going to be interested in moving in the future with you. Some of them are going to be stuck in the past and don't want to rock the boat. Again, some difficult challenges will need to be made. Why is this important? This is important because just like I mentioned that employees are like the water that fit into a glass, they are also the water that is inside of a well. And what happens if you have a poisonous bit of water in the well? The whole well is poisoned. So in order for you to make sure that you have a solid structure and a culture that you can build and that you can nurture, you have to make sure that your employees are connected and aligned with the values, the beliefs, and the vision moving forward. And the way that you can tell is by looking at their actions. If their actions are inconsistent with what they say, you know that there is a problem, and that problem needs to be dealt with. And hopefully, most employees will adapt and realize that it is in their best interest to be employee-centered and, and customer-driven, because ultimately that is how you build a sustainable brand and one that is going to really help them as they develop in their career. But don't make the mistake of trying to replace employees and, and shift your staff before you shift your work processes and your systems that support your staff. In most cases, it's not your staff's fault. Honestly, if you do not have the right work processes in place, the feedback mechanisms in place, and have built a system that is really built to last, you cannot really expect your employees to all of a sudden be superstars. So the employees is the last one to take a look at after the work processes and after the executive suite. And as you take a look at your customers, this is very important and I left it to be last because remember, it's hard and impossible to engage and empower customers if you have an employee's base, work processes and an executive team that is indifferent. So that's why first you have, must work on the employee side before you can work on the customer side. So as you figure out the desired state, you figure out the gaps across this process, figure out what's important. You're going to need to prioritize these gaps and then you're going to need to create a plan to solve them. Now I'm going to encourage you to not try and boil the ocean. There's a lot of things that I've talked about in this video series and a lot of what I've talked about is important, but the sequence in which you operate is most important. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Get the results on a few items first, show the wins, and then use that to catapult yourself, build momentum into the next phase of activities. A transformation doesn't happen overnight, but it definitely can happen if you're committed to making it happen. So as you build a plan to resolve these challenges that we have brought to the surface, I want you to remember that every plan must obviously have a clear objective and a clear goal to understand what it is that needs to be accomplished. You need to have a clear scope of what the project is about. How do you define success? How do you define failure as it relates to the project? It needs to have a deadline. If it doesn't have a deadline, it's not a real plan. You also need to make sure that the time, money, and the human talent in your organization is brought into this project in a way that will lead to a project success. If you don't do that, if it's just a pet project of one or two people in the organization, it will go nowhere. Now, as you build this project, you have to treat it with respect. That means you need to have regular progress review readouts with the executive team, with the executive sponsor that is part of the project. I recommend that every project have an executive sponsor. Somebody needs to be there to to grease the wheels throughout the organization. I also want to suggest that you install a customer experience officer, a chief customer officer. They go by many different names, a customer engagement officer, somebody who has the ability to cut across the organization internally and externally to make sure that the friction points are resolved. This is absolutely critical. And the more that you're able to do this and report back to your team the progress that you're making, the more that you will build an amazing amount of trust and rapport, which leads to respect and loyalty and a feeling of belonging and ultimately an empowered workforce that thinks and thinks independently to be able to solve problems when problems come up.
internally or externally. And at the end of the day, that's your secret weapon. That's how you differentiate in the marketplace and that's how you win. And that's what I'm suggesting you do in the customer engagement economy, which you may have read about in the Customer Engagement Manifesto. So I hope you found this video series enlightening and informative. I really hope it's given you a lot of value. If you have questions or comments, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. This is Ray Sundle wishing you the very best.